I'm joined in studio by EFF spokesperson Mbui Seni Ndlozi. Now you posed many questions to him via our social network channels and we're going to ask him your questions now. Are you ready to hear what News24 users had to ask you? Yes. All right. The first one is coming through from Ntokoza Mabata who wants to know why do members of the EFF behave like this in Parliament? Do you not feel that it's disrespectful to the other parties who are in the National Assembly? No, no, not at all. It's, uh, it's the nature of parliaments. Um, since we came to parliament, Ndogozo will agree that um, we have generated uh, public interest, including her interest, in what happens in parliament. And, and that's why we, we are now able to all engage about how it should happen, uh, under what conditions, and so on, because we've managed to bring the public interest uh, back into that institution. But we've got to restore teeth to parliament. We found a toothless parliament. And that's why no one was talking about that parliament. No one, no one cared. It never used to even trend. Parliament doesn't used to only trend on social media during sauna. But these days, parliament trends all the time. It's the most fashionable topic in the country. Why? Because of the economic freedom fighters. So... And why is it trending? Why are people paying attention to it? It's because of the robust liveliness that the economic freedom fighters has brought into there. Now, many people who say that we are disrespectful are suffering from um, a phobia called ageism, which is often used to discriminate in instances where people cannot use the power of their argument to put you down. They use the number of their years to put you down. Now in Parliament we are at work. It's not about you know some conversation under a tree in a village. We are at work. We are all adults. We are voting citizens. We ask each other questions. We call each other honourable even if we don't think you are honourable. But it's, it's, it, it has to be a festival of ideas. It has to be about the, 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 the respectability of your argument as opposed to the respectability, the respectability of the color of your skin, the respectability of the number of years you've been in parliament or you have lived. No, that's not what it's about. It's about the respectability of the power of your argument. And if you're making a weak argument, I have to tell you that's a weak argument and you must take it. Because we're making policies that affect people's lives. So we've got to be so interrogative to make sure that we, we look at all perspectives so that when we pass a law, we know that we have truly exhausted it. So no, the behavior of the EFF is not disrespectful. It's robust and it's necessary to hold the executive accountable. Let's move on to a question coming through from Safiso, who says, why is it part of the EFF's motive to cause mayhem and not to put your ideology forward? No, I mean, part of, uh, if you say EFF, you ask little children, uh, they say, land, they say, pay back the money. All those are a part of our ideology. The most important ideological point of departure is that we've got to build an accountable leadership. It's, it's in our seven non-negotiable pillars that are found in our founding manifesto. And that is, you've got to be able to, uh, to build an accountable government that doesn't use its security apparatuses to intimidate those that hold it accountable. It's an important ideological question. It has to do with accountability and democracy. Uh, but we've put sharply, one of the most important contributions in this state of the nation address and the last is the EFF's arguments in parliament. We've, yesterday, the last speaker of the ANC took a platform with 20 minutes. That's like one of the highest times, one of the the biggest time in the slots, with 20 minutes, one of the, the best of the best, with a PhD, Secretary General of the South African Communist Party. It doesn't get more ideological than that. They forwarded him to sweep all of us. He couldn't say anything about the economic freedom fighters except to insult us, except to call us name, no, I offered to supervise you, congratulations for finishing your masters. They couldn't say anything to us because the argument that we put is of the highest quality. 
we, we deconstructed the Freedom Charter. We demonstrated that their proposals have nothing to do with the Freedom Charter. They couldn't respond to our argument. And if they make rulings that are unfair, if they pass laws that are unjust, we are obliged by the moral revolutionary compass that dictates our actions to defy those laws, to defy those rulings. We will never, we promise South Africans that we will never, we will never respect and comply with unjust laws, with unjust rulings. And you can see in Parliament, that makes, that calls for all presiding officers to be competent with the rules. Because we quote a rule and we say we are rising on this rule, please rule. If they rule unjustly, we rise, we say, but can you explain your ruling in terms, excuse me, in terms of the rules? They are unable to do so. So they are the ones that have been responsible for the mayhem because they rule unfairly, they rule in the protection of the executive, of the ministers, of the ANC, but ultimately of Jacob Zuma. And we're not going to accept that. If needs be, parliament must be stuck because then you are rendering it useless. If it cannot hold the executive accountable, it ceases to be parliament. It just becomes a talk shop. We did not apply to become a tech shop. We're here to make sure that it's got teeth and teeth that bites. Now, one very brief answer, please, for the last one from Musso, who says, Parliament aside, what are your chief strategies for implementing social change? Well, we think that, firstly, we have to unapologetically implement the seven cardinal pillars of the economic freedom fighters. That is how you're going to change South Africa. That is how you're going to move South Africa beyond the colonial patterns of ownership and the distribution of opportunities. Expropriation of land without compensation for equal redistribution. That is the only thing, that is the only policy that will help all of us belong to South Africa. That is the only thing that will help the implementation of the Freedom Charters clause that South Africa belongs to all who live in it. Nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic industries. Why? We've got to, because most of those things are owned by people who are not interested in the development of South Africa. In its industrial development, they don't invest in South Africa. They don't use their resources in South Africa. We need those because that's the money of the country. Those are the resources of the country. We need them because we have to redirect those investments, stop crying for investments from elsewhere. We use those investments to push industrial development here at home to produce our own cell phones, to produce our own televisions, to produce our own microwaves and cars, because those will always be needed in the economy, the cameras. We've got to then take those strategic sectors to lead that development. Those are some of the policies that as the EFF are putting on the table. We want an opportunity for self-determination, to run our own country, to run our own economy. We want an opportunity for that to happen. And how do we get that economy? That opportunity is by democratizing the economy, is by making sure that the most important monopolies are under democratic hands. And therefore, democratic decisions can be taken about the redistribution of those economic resources. That's how you're going to include a number of uh, South Africans to be full participants into the economy. And that, when that day comes, poverty, inequality, malnutrition, all the problems that we're faced with will be history. We will have new challenges. We will have like, should we produce, how many, how many laptops do we produce? Do we prioritize laptops over cameras, over television? How many schools do we build? Do we build this type of architecture or that type? Of, those will be the problems that we're going to have. Not the problems of how many people sleep under a bridge. How many people are homeless? No. All those when we've got the resources, we're able to respond to because we'll empower South Africans to build their own houses when we have given them land and so on and so forth. That's how we believe we can bring social change to our people. Now finally, on a much, much lighter note, when I threw out these questions to our social media followers, what do you want Mbuyiseni and Lozi to answer? We had at least 20 responses from young women and some young men who wanted to know if Mbuyiseni and Lozi realizes how attractive he is. <laughs> <laughs> and is he the new poster boy for the EFF? <laughs> Not me, coming through from our social media responses. So, no. are you using your looks for good? 
I don't have a mandate to talk about my looks. Uh, I'm the spokesperson of the EFF, and I didn't get a mandate to talk about, uh, you know, my 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 aesthetic performance and and outlook. I think we can get a different platform to speak about that. Perhaps you can re respond to them on Twitter then. Yeah, we'll we'll find them on the streets of Twitter. <laughs>